Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So, according to Fabrizio Romano, who is a very reliable Italian journalist, he has said that Sergio Reguilon wants to join Manchester United in this summer transfer window. The only problem is, we are refusing to meet Real Madrid's asking price. Now, I think Real Madrid just won over £27 million. Pounds. Now, Sergio Reguilon has revealed his transfer preference and he would rather go to Sevilla than Manchester United on a permanent deal. But the problem, is, uh, but the thing is, is that Sevilla are now in advanced talks to sign Marcos Acuna from Sporting. So that means Sergio Reguilon to Sevilla now will not be happening. Don't forget Sergio Reguilon was on loan with Sevilla last season. He made 38 appearances in all competitions. He obviously had a few loan spells with the Logrones. Now, Fabrizio Romano did also say recently that Sergio Reguilon had been offered to Manchester United and he said he'd also been offered to Arsenal and Tottenham. You know, Sergio Reguilon has been at Real Madrid for several years. You know, he has been there since 2005. So he's been there around 15 years. He's still got a contract with Real Madrid until 2023. Uh, but he said recently we've not yet made a decision on the Sergio Reguilon transfer. But he obviously can't get in Real Madrid's team because obviously Zinedine Zidane prefers Ferland Mende and Marcelo ahead of Reguilon. And it's also saying now that Real Madrid will accept no buyback clause inserted in any deal because it recently said that Real Madrid do want to insert a buyback insert a buyback clause in any deal but Sergio Reguilon is a left back and Manchester United are in search for a left back and it'd be very beneficial if we could get one in we've obviously got two predominant left backs in the team at the moment and that's obviously Luke Shaw he's our first choice left back and we've obviously now got Brandon Williams he's our backup left back We've also got the law and Timothy Fossil Mensu that can be deployed as left backs and that. But my element of concern about Luke Shaw is, is that he is injury prone. So that is the breaking news on Sergio Reguilon. Now, I want to delve into some news on Thiago Alcantara from Bayern Munich. So he now could be heading to Manchester United. Uh, Richard Marrow from Twitter has reported that Thiago to Manchester United now is as close as it's ever been because he says the fee, the fee structure and the agent fees are close and he mentioned that the personal terms do need to be resolved. Now, Liverpool have been emerged as the favourites for a while to sign Thiago. It recently said that Liverpool had agreed personal terms with the player and they've recently submitted a new offering. Uh, Jürgen Klopp has spoken about the Thiago transfer saga and he's happy that Liverpool are obviously not interested in him and he says everything is fine. But he said Liverpool will only step up their interest in Thiago if Ginny Wanyadam is to leave them. I think Ginny Wanyadam now is set to stay at Liverpool, is he? Uh, because Barcelona have said they are Barcelona's board have said they are happy, you know, if Ginny Wanyadam uh, stays at Liverpool. He's just got a year left on his contract as Ginny Wanyadam, or is it under a year? But it said the other week that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had held talks with Thiago Alcantara in person over a move to Man United because we're looking to hijack Liverpool's move for the player. You know, Bayern Munich have revealed their asking price. I think the one around is it £25 million. For a while, Liverpool have been reluctant to meet Bayern Munich's asking price. Thiago is available on a free next year because that's when his current contract does expire. Uh, Thiago recently denied that he'd asked Bayern Munich to leave because there was rumours coming out saying that Thiago could still end up staying at Bayern Munich. Um, but he did speak about his future. But he's remained loyal to Bayern Munich for several years. You know, he's enjoyed seven seasons with them. 
He's won a total of 16 major honours. He's scored 31 goals, I think, in like 235 games in all competitions. And Bayern Munich paid around €25 million Euros for him from Barcelona back in 2013. There's also been rumours saying that Barcelona, his former club, have been interested. It mentioned that there was internal disagreements. But Thiago is predominantly a box-to-box -box midfielder, but he can also be deployed as an attacking midfielder. And he can also be deployed as a holding midfielder. And he is the age of 29. So yeah, you know, we could now get him on the board. Just a bit of more, just a bit more news now on Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is frustrated with the Jaden Sancho transfer saga because it has been going on now for such a long time. We have been in for Jaden Sancho for like the last three years, but I have said to you why it's been such a long transfer saga because Borussia Dortmund's asking price has been the stumbling block. You know, Dortmund's valuation is around £108 million. You know, we've been reluctant to meet their valuation. It did recently say that we submitted a £90 million bid. And there's going to be a further £18 million due in performance-related add-ons. And this will be paid in instalments over the course of the next two to three seasons. Fabrizio Romano did also recently say that the agent fees and the personal terms had been agreed with Sancho. Also said a contract worth 250 grand a week uh, was agreed. Uh, obviously, that would make Jaden Sancho the third highest paid player at the football club behind De Gea and Paul Pogba. And we want to complete the signing of Jaden Sancho next week. So we want him in time for the Crystal Palace game. So if we are, if we are to sign him, could be making his debut against Palace. Uh, Solskjaer's held several talks with Sancho and Sancho's actually told Solskjaer that he wants to play for the football club. Uh, Mike Phelan, uh, who's our assistant, he recently said that Man United could be closing in on a deal for Sancho. And Mike Phelan's recently been following him on Instagram. It, there was reports coming out yesterday saying that we could now uh, end our interest in Sancho because of obviously you no know, Borussia Dortmund's asking price and we've now looked at three alternatives to him. Um, obviously, you know, we've been looking at Gareth Bale from Real Madrid. Uh, we've obviously been looking at Douglas Costa from Juventus. You know, we've been looking at Jao Felix from Atletico Madrid. And there's also other alternatives we have been looking at because there is much cheaper solutions than Sancho. But we have had breakthrough in negotiations to sign the player. Now, what I said recently, it said the exact same thing last month because Fabrizio Romano came out last month and said that terms with Sancho had been agreed and it said he was set to sign a five-year contract with a football club. But just after that, he said that talks have broken down due to Borussia Dortmund's asking price. Christian Fark spoken about the Sancho saga a few times. James Cooper quite a few weeks ago had also spoken about it. But quite a few weeks ago, Sancho to Manchester United did look dead in the water. Main explanations is because Dortmund said we had until the 10th of August to sign the player. And obviously we missed out on that deadline. So Sancho decided to go on pre-season said a few weeks ago we'd abandoned our chase for the player until the summer of 2021, which is obviously next summer. And Borussia Dortmund said that they are convinced that he will remain loyal to them for at least another season. Uh, Sancho has endured three years with Borussia Dortmund. You know, he's still under contract with them until 2022. Dortmund only paid £8 million in from Man City back in 2017. And obviously we know that he will be our next number seven because uh, he will fulfil number seven well and we have got number seven vacant at the moment. But I've already outlined the reasons why I want Sancho at Man United is because he's got a very, very good friendship with, with Rashford. I think he'll exceed expectations in the Premier League and he's predominantly a right winner and Manchester United are in search for a right winner. You know... 
And plus, you know, he is very, very young. And Dortmund have let quite a few big names go. Don't forget the letter Bamyan go, Pulisic, Lewandowski, Usain Dembele, Matt Hummels, Ilkwan Gundogan, Mkhitaryan, Sinji Kagawa at one point. But, you know, we will see what happens. And Solskjaer's already uh, told Ed Woodward to go and sign Sancho. And he's obviously told Ed Woodward to fix it. So, that's the news on that. <clears throat> but, this, there's three weeks left now of the summer transfer window. And so far, we have only made one signing. You know, we signed Donny van der Beek from Ajax. Got him in a deal worth £40 million. Obviously paid just over £34 million up front. I think there was like £4.4 million in add-ons. You know, Donny van der Beek signed a five-year contract with Manchester United. Obviously, that keeps him at the club till 2025, and there's also an option of a further year. You know, Donny van der Beek's going to obviously wear the number 34 shirt, and he will be making his debut for the club against Crystal Palace next week. Um, I've already gone through with you what I think Donny van, der Beek will, Donny van der Beek will bring to Manchester United. I think he'll bring... Uh, goals, he'll add, depth in the, he'll add depth there, more depth. And I think he'll complement Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba in our midfield. Now, I think we'll play Donny van der Beek as a box-to-box -box midfielder because that's his predominant position. But before, he has played as a holding midfielder and he's also be de been deployed as an attacking midfielder. But Solskjaer has said he wants to make three signings after Donny van der Beek. You know, this... Quite a lot of things Man United have got to do before this window shuts. Obviously, we've got to get a centre-half in because we need someone to go alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. You know, but we have actually you know, got a lot of centre-halves in the team. I think we've got like seven centre-halves in the team. Like I said, it'd be beneficial if we can get a left-back in. Um, also, too, we need to sell players in this summer transfer window, which I think Man United are going to do. Um, obviously, we're looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We're looking to get rid of Andres Pereira. We're also looking to get rid of Smalling, Rojo, Jones. Uh, we're looking to get rid of Delo. Delo is now up for sale. Uh, Timothy Foster Mensa, he's also now up for sale. You know, Sergio Romero, he's open to leaving the football club. But we sell players in this summer transfer window, will generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. Uh, but Solskjaer you know, recently revealed that he, is he has been frustrated with the club's board. Main explanation, main explanations, main explanations is because of the lack of transfer business so far in this summer transfer window, and obviously our recruitment policy has been poor for several years. But you know, I think Solskjaer deserves more backing as Manchester United manager because I don't feel as though he's getting backed enough. And I think Solskjaer is progressing as Manchester United manager because he's obviously public, publicly come out and admitted that Manchester United have got to spend money in this summer transfer window. And Woodward did say, didn't he, don't forget, that he was determined to back Solskjaer. He also said at the first, first part of last season that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe. You know, the Glazers even said that they're determined to back Solskjaer. You know, Woodward's been at the club since 2012 and the Glazers have been with us since 2005. But Solskjaer recently gave us an update on our transfer plans and he did say uh, we, we do remain active in this transfer market and obviously, you know, he, he's demanding more signings at the club. But I think if we don't make any more signings, Solskjaer won't be too frustrated. But you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to improve the squad. You know, Solskjaer's trying to change the culture of the football club. You know. But I was saying, wasn't I, you know, before this, you know, summer transfer window began, that Man United do need at least three signings. Uh, this season is a big season for Solskjaer because this season is going to be his second season at the club. And I said, if we can get another two signings in before this window shuts, I think our expectations this season will be to challenge for the Premier League title. I think another one of the expectations will be to win uh, some silverware uh, because we've not yet won out in terms of silverware under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. 
and we haven't won a trophy for over three years and it's the first time this has happened in just over 30 years. So Solskjaer is going to have to exceed his expectations this season if he is uh, to remain at Manchester United. Um, I obviously don't know if he's the foreseeable future for the club. I think this season will tell the story. But it is a transition period for Man United and it has been a transition period for a while. We also need to see improvements this season like I've already gone through with you. Solskjaer's decision making needs to improve. I think uh, there's still certain players that have got to improve. I think Maguire's got to improve. Uh, like I updated you earlier on, Harry Maguire will remain Manchester United captain for this season. Solskjaer's confirmed it. Um, don't forget Harry Maguire got given extra time off recently for his arrest in Greece and his court case in Greece. Um, last season was his first season at the club. We got Harry Maguire in a deal worth £80 million from Leicester last summer. So as it stands at the moment, second most expensive sign at the club and the most expensive centre-half in the world. I think uh, Lindelof's also got to improve. Um, even if he was to sign a centre-half in his summer transfer window, you know, Lindelof obviously would be used as a backup then. Uh, Lindelof's enjoyed three years at the club. You know, we got him from Benfica back in 2017 for £30 million. And uh, Juan Bissaka, we've got to see more attacking intent from him because that's what he's lacking at the moment. And hopefully we we'll see more of it this season. This season's going to be Anwan Bissaka's second season at the club. Uh, last season was Anwan Bissaka's first season at Manchester United. We got Anwan Bissaka in a deal worth £50 million pounds from Crystal Palace last summer. Uh, Bay, he's been subjected to transfer speculation, but I think he will remain at Man United for at least another season. I think he's got to improve his fitness, Eric Bay, because he is far too injury prone. You know, Bay's enjoyed four years with Man United. We did get him from Villarreal back in 2016 for £30 million, one of our backup centre-halves. I also think that Luke Shaw's got to improve his fitness because he's too injury prone. You know, Luke Shaw is our first choice left back and will remain, I think, our first choice left back. Uh, that's if we don't get a left back in. You know, Luke Shaw's enjoyed six years at the club. Got him from Southampton back in 2014 for £30 million. Pounds. Uh, De Gea's obviously got to, got to get back to his best because he's been a liability in the last couple of years, reflects on the calamitous mistakes he's made. You know, this season's going to be David De Gea's 10th season at Manchester United. You know, De Gea's made like 405 appearances for us in all competitions. 300 odd of those appearances have come in the Premier League. And he's won everything domestically at the football club. And he has won individual awards, reflecting on his good run of performances. But like I've said before, I think De Gea's had seven good years out of the nine years he's been at Man United. A lot of United fans do believe that he's going to remain number one goalkeeper for this season. I think, personally speaking, Solskjaer needs to put Dean Henderson as number one because I think Dean Henderson is now reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper because he has got that experience behind him. So yeah, Solskjaer's got a goalkeeping decision to make. I think, um, yeah, I think they're basically you know, the players that have got to step up to the plate. And I definitely believe that there's aspects of our game that I've got to improve. Obviously, we've got to be more clinical in front of goal slightly. We've got to score more goals, you know. I think we look very, very good in that midfield. So, there's no... We don't need to really strengthen up there now. <clears throat> I think right back we're okay. Uh, Centre half, we need one of them. Because, you know, we do leak a lot of goals, to be fair. But don't get me wrong, I have seen him, quite a lot of improvements since Solskjaer came in, like I've said on my other videos. I think definitely our recruitment has improved under him. Uh, to be fair, Solskjaer has got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into Manchester United. We're seeing the likes of Young, Valencia, Damian, Herrera, Fellaini, Angel Gomez, Tahif Chong, Sanchez, Lukaku... You know, Dylan Levitt all leave the football club. We know that obviously, you know, Chong and Le Dylan Levitt went out on loan. Uh, Joe Pereira, I think, has gone out on loan as well for another season. Uh, we loaned Small and Rojo out last, uh, last year. But obviously now they are back at Manchester United. So I'll also credit Solskjaer for that. 
I think um, he has promoted the youth very, very well at Manchester United. We are unbeaten in the league since January. So we are unbeaten in our last 14 league games. A hell of a lot of players have improved under the Solskjaer era as well. Especially the top players. I think Martial really, really improved. You know, Martial has enjoyed five years with Manchester United. And he's had two good seasons, has he? And hasn't he? You know, last season he was good under Solskjaer. And he was very, very good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal era. We got Martial at just the age of 19. And he is now, what, 24. And we know now that Martial does play in that central position. Even though that's not his predominant position. I think also to Marcus Rashford. Really, really improved. Uh, recently been out of an ankle injury. Also had a back injury for us last season. Uh, Rashford has been a United player since the age of 7. And he's been in our senior squad since 2016 and since then has become an integral part of our team. You know, Rashford's been at the club around 15 years, so he's been part of the club for several years. Uh, we know now that obviously Rashford does play on that left-hand side. I think uh, Igalo's done well since he's come in. Uh, we obviously got Odi and Igalo on deadline day in January. We obviously got him in as a backup to Rashford. He was our top goal scorer in the FA Cup last season, but just after lockdown, we'd extended Odi and Agarlo's loan until January 2021. Whether we get Odi and Agarlo permanently or not, I do not know. Uh, Mason Greenwood uh, really done well. He did well last season. I think last season was his first full season in the senior squad. Um, I was also very, very impressed with Brandon Williams. I've also got to say that Fred has really improved under Solskjaer. Don't forget, Fred has recently confirmed that he is staying at Manchester United because he was subjected to some, to some transfer speculation recently, was Fred. Uh, Galatasaray were interested in him. Uh, Roma were also interested in him. Uh, Fred's been at Man United a few years now. Obviously, we got him from Shakhtar Donetsk for £52 million in the summer of 2018. Fred's still got a contract with us until 2023. Matic, um, he's another player that's really, really improved since Solskjaer came in. You know, Matic did get a lot of starts towards the end of last season. Not so long ago, he signed a three-year deal with Man United. Uh, Matic has enjoyed three years at the club. We got him in a deal with £40 million pounds from Chelsea back in 2017. You know... But I think he'll stay with us for at least another season. Uh, Tom Inway... I was very, very impressed with him last season, so he's also improved. But don't forget, he did have an ankle injury last season. It weren't so long ago that McTominay signed a five-year deal with Manchester United. You know, weren't, you know. And I've been impressed with the players that Solskjaer's brought into the football club so far because obviously Solskjaer so far spent over £200 million at Manchester United. Um, obviously, I haven't got a perception as yet on Donny van der Beek because, you know, he hasn't played yet. But I think, you know, James, for the vast majority of last season, did very, very well for us. Um, but obviously, towards the end of the season, he dropped out of the squad, didn't he, did Daniel James? I thought Solskjaer did overplay him, to be honest with you. We paid £15 million for Daniel James from Swansea last summer. And especially if Sancho comes in, there's no room for him in the team. Uh, like I said, um, Bissaka uh, did well last season. I've also been very, very impressed with Bruno Fernandes. He's definitely made the difference in the team. You know, we got Bruno Fernandes in January in a deal worth like £55 million, was it? Uh, Bruno Fernandes has already won Premier League Player of the Month three times, reflects on his good run of performances. And I think Bruno Fernandes has scored like, is it 12 or 13 goals for Man United in all competitions since his arrival from Sporting Lisbon. So I'll give him that. Also did very, very good on his debut against Wolves in that 0-0 draw last season. I think he had the most touches in that game. Uh, Paul Pogba's done well. Has done well. Um, he obviously you know, did well towards the end of last season, did Pogba. I thought his combination with Bruno Fernandes was very, very good. For the vast majority of last season, though, I didn't have a perception on Pogba because he was out with that ankle injury. Pogba sustained a few injuries as a Man United player. Uh, don't forget, Paul Pogba returned to Man United training yesterday. He has now recovered from coronavirus. 
But it's Solskjaer's confirmed he is a doubt for the Crystal Palace game next week. I just think we need to get Paul Pogba a new long-term contract at the football club to end the uncertainty over his future. But I think he will remain at Man United for this season. I really, really do. Um, so these are the improvements I have seen uh, since Solskjaer came into the club. Um, last season was obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first full season at the football club. And to be honest with you, I thought he did well. He exceeded most expectations. Obviously got us, quali got us qualification for the Champions League. And I did say how important Champions League was for our players attracting players and for the financial structure. He also got us third and we also progressed to three semi-finals. We got to the FA Cup semi-final, the Europa League semi-final and the EFL Cup semi-final. But like Solskjaer said, you know, semi-finals are not good enough. But the first part of last season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. At that point, Solskjaer was very, very close to getting sacked as Manchester United manager. Yeah, But another good thing as well, uh, we've extended a lot of players' contracts since Solskjaer came in. I still think we've got around six or seven players' contracts that are due to expire next year. You know... Uh, by the way, we did lose today in um, our pre-season game against Aston Villa by one goal to nil. That's something I do want to confirm with you. That is the only pre-season game, you know, now we have uh, played. But, um, like I said, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. You know, we have sat three managers since the Ferguson era and that was obviously David Moyes, you know, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. And like I've said, you know, we haven't we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers because Man United are not known as a sacking football club. In the last seven years, we've been playing a lot of catch-up. You know, look what we've done in the last seven years. We've had different managers with different types of philosophies. We spent nearly £1 billion on players in all the managerial areas since Ferguson left, including what we've spent under Solskjaer. And we've, we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. But a lot of them players have not been the right calibre players for Manchester United. You know, they haven't. Uh, we haven't mounted any title challenge up in the last seven years. You know, we have not won the Premier League since 2013. Um, we are the most successful team in Premier League history because we have won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League titles and that. So there you go. Uh, by the way, I have looked at some of the results today. Um, not all of them. Obviously, Arsenal beat Fulham 3-0, so a good start for them. Uh, I think Palace beat Southampton 1-0, didn't they? Um, Liverpool leads last time I checked. Was that like 3-2, something like that? To Liverpool? Yes, it was. Uh, that sounds um, a pretty good game. But yeah, but it's very imperative. We've heard about what I said earlier on. It's very imperative. We've met more signings in this summer transfer window because these teams around us that are recruiting very, very well. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.